What is up guys, I hope you're well and welcome to another video of Entitled Parents. Yeah, we're pushing those out this week. I mean, you guys seem to love them. If you have any other suggestions for subreddits that we should be reading, please comment below and join our Discord. And let's get into this. EM abandoned daughter for son, harassed and slandered the girl and her adopted father for her bone marrow 16 years later, for the son. This is a true story in China. When EM had her second daughter, she decided she didn't want her. You see, while the family was given special permission to have two children, as opposed to the one child policy, they wanted a son. And this extra girl was just an inconvenience taking a precious spot for a boy. So they abandoned her up without hesitation. The next year, EM got pregnant with a boy who was spoiled to death in the family. The girl ended up with a man more than 300 kilometers away from her original village. He and his wife had three pregnancies, but all ended up as miscarriages, so they adopted the girl, but divorced soon after because of the stress that came with the adoption. For 16 years, he had been raising his adopted daughter on his own. This man is just a crab farmer and is in no way rich, but he loved the girl as his own daughter. They were living a quiet and happy life together until one day, EM turned up. Turns out his son got leukemia and needed bone marrow and no one in the family had a match so they turned to the daughter they abandoned 16 years ago, hoping that she would be a match. The father felt sorry for the 14 year old boy. He agreed to take the girl to hospital for a test, but he was afraid that the girl would know she was abandoned for her gender, so he made the EM promise not to tell her that she was adopted. The girl was a match and agreed to the procedure under the impression that she was donating for a stranger. The adoptive father then asked for a bond for the girl's health. In the beginning, he was misled into thinking that he would be as simple as donating blood. However, the doctors told him that donating bone marrow is a risky procedure. He was worried that if there was any complication, he won't have any means to save his daughter. The money would be returned to Ian if the girl remains complication free when she's married. Ian refused. Then the father said don't worry about the money, but the surgery needs to be near where he's living so he can take care of his daughter and work. Ian refused again saying that it would be more expensive for them. The father hesitated and EM fucking exploded. EM, her husband and their eldest daughter marched to the girl's school right after class. Stopped the car the girl was in, pulled open the door, grabbed the girl by the arm and started yelling at her that she was adopted, that they are her real family and she needs to save her younger brother. The teachers had to physically intervene to stop them from taking her away. A bystander called the police, even in the police station. EM kept pressuring the girl for the bone marrow. The girl was in shock after knowing that she was adopted in such a violent way and cried for the whole night. This put her into a lot of psychological stress. The next day, EM printed out hundreds of open letters calling both the girl and her father by name, saying that they are cold blooded and the girl in particular is ignorant and doesn't understand morals. She even brought up the fact that the adoptive father experienced miscarriages to insult him. She emphasised that the boy is the girl's biological brother. She bolded that, just to put more pressure on the girl. She put this around the village the girl was living in, all the way to the girl's school, so both of them can't even go back to their home. When she was asked about this later, she said she didn't think what it would do to the girl. She even went to the village council and said that the girl's rightfully hers, and said she will take the girl back and make her donate her bone marrows. Of course, she was told that the girl was legally adopted. She has no rights over her, and if she does anything like that, it would be kidnapping. She started interfering with the girl to and from school. A teacher had to drive the girl to and from school for her safety, and then even got assaulted by EM's relative for their trouble. The EM later went onto a television program, probably wanting to bully the girl and her father into giving up her body rights. She got ripped apart on live TV. Later they found another match on the donor database so the boy is fine. The thing is, if she had been less entitled and cruel to this girl, she would probably have already donated her bone marrow. She could have doomed her son to death because of this. I know this sounds like an absurd story, but it's true. Here is the mentioned TV program, it's in Chinese though. Oh my god, that's like um, what was that film where they like they they breed humans just just so they can use their body parts for like the rich people. It reminds me of that I can't remember what the film is called, but I'm sure someone will remind me. EM wants me to tutor her child using my own supplies, 
two hours a day, three days a week. Just found this sub and felt my next door neighbour fit this perfectly. Slight backstory. I moved into a small seaside town last summer with my partner due to my health problems. I paint and sculpt as a hobby and as a side job and therapy. My partner and I don't have children and we don't want them. Neither of us dislike children though. Anyway, I avoid talking to my neighbour because she's very manipulative. If she asks about something, you can bet she's going to twist it so you think it was her idea to help her. This is one story of how I was apparently going to tutor her nine-year-old daughter in art for free with me supplying everything. Entitled mother who is usually drunk, me, the sexy beast right in this. <laughs> so, how's the art coming along? Pretty good, just finishing up a commission. That's great, it's great to have an artist next door. My EC loves art and you should tutor her. Thanks, but I wouldn't be able to explain my methods. Oh, I'm sure you can. It's just painting. Oh, EC will be so happy. No, she won't. I can't tutor her. What do you mean you won't tutor her? You've got all the time and all the stuff in your house. A few hours a day, a few days a week won't do much harm. Yes, the supplies I have are in the house, obviously, but they aren't cheap or easy to replace. Oh, that's fine. I'm sure it's not too much bother for you. Getting angry and worked up at this point. EM starts to go back in the house. I'll just let EC know you're going to tutor her. She loves art and this will be great for her. I told you no, accept that no or not, but I'm not tutoring your child. You'd only be upsetting her yourself. EM gives me a dirty look and slams her back door shut. I have more stories about her from trying to get me to go next door to cook her daughter dinner to volunteering me to take over another neighbour's puppy because they can't be asked with it, or her trying to invite all the neighbour's kids into my house to look and play with the therapy pets. I now avoid EM when I can. I get fed up with her and her entitled BS and the way she gossips about everyone. God, who needs a neighbour like that? Who just <laughs> invites their kid to go, like free tutoring, you'd at least offer some art supplies, wouldn't you? Like, all right, I'll buy the paint and stuff for you if you wouldn't mind teaching her or even offer some money for your child to be taught something, you know. Hi, this is my one encounter with an EP. Hope you guys like it, and it's the first post on Reddit, so some fanfare, I guess. So a little background, because there isn't too much to tell. A few years ago, I was in a band with some friends. We mostly did covers of stuff like Kaiser Chiefs, Franz Ferdinand, Oasis, etc. Just Brit rock and stuff we like, with the occasional original song thrown in. We're not spectacular, but not shitting through the bed. We didn't really do too much in the way of shows, just local things. Oh, our secondary school wants a band and we're graduates, and just playing in pubs near here in exchange for beer. Overall, it was a decent gig, and just for a bit of fun. We go to a show at a local pub. Now they do allow kids after 9 p.m. They do request anyone with children leave, and it becomes 18 plus for the night, because they expect people to drink and stuff. At 9 p.m., they cut off the food service to try and coerce families out and if they don't leave by 9.30, they're usually told to leave. And it's normally quite peaceful. I never saw anyone take umbrage with the rules. Until one night. So there's a family who enter at 8.55pm. Mother, father, a five-year-old I think, and a baby in a pram. Now our show was advertised clearly outside. 9pm, free entry, so it's pretty clear. The EM of the family decides to order a big dinner for their children, which are told the kitchen's shutting in five minutes, it's not worth it, etc. But they keep going on about how it's not 9pm and blah blah blah. So the staff do shrug and go fine and prepare some food. So we start playing about 9.05, give or take, playing our normal set of stuff, which isn't explicit or anything, it's just music. So for 15 minutes we are playing loudly and the EP's baby starts crying. I don't know if it was our fault or not, but the issue comes when we cover a particular song, Michael by Franz Ferdinand. It's a very, very, very gay song. But we like it, and well, some of us are gay, so fuck it. We start singing, and it's essentially an explicit love song about wanting to shag a dude on the dance floor, and oh my god, the look on this 30-something woman's face. If looks could kill, I'd charge her with war crimes. Once the song is done, she gets up and storms over to us. How dare you play music like that? It's obscene and there are children here. Um, excuse me? It's just part of the normal set list and no one else has issues with it. Sorry. At this point, the drummer and bassist are giggling like idiots. 
It's obscene and you're trying to expose my child to homosexuality. No, we're not. We're just... And she cuts me off. No, no, you will let me finish. Your music, she said in the same way that most of us would say tapeworm, is obscene and should not be allowed in family establishments like this. Now everyone is looking. They're used to us taking about 30 seconds to talk to someone or have a quick drink of something in between songs, but this is something else. Before I respond, the bartender, I think he was the owner too, actually I can't remember, stepped in. Mom, you're interfering with the entertainment and some other things about not having children. Something about being dickish to the wait staff, etc. They argue back and forth and back and forth, and oh my god. She eventually leaves with her family but hisses that they've lost a customer for life. We did eventually go back to play at the bar a few times before university started and then the band broke up. I mean, who takes like a five year old child and a baby in a pram that late into a restaurant at night anyway? I mean, they're just asking for it and then getting riled up about homosexuality. I mean, come on now, please. EP is mad I got a lead in a school play. So picture this, it's eighth grade, my last year at school I've gone to for 10 years, pre-K to eighth. It's a modest school, so almost everyone knows each other, plus parents. EP is a total PTA mum. It's one of those people who spends way more time than necessary setting up fundraisers and visiting her kids in class. Not that that's super important to the story, but I felt I should set the scene for you all. Our school has a middle school play every year. This year was Snow White, and I usually don't audition because stage fright. However, all of my friends were, so I suppose I would tag along. I read a couple of parts just for shits and giggles, lo and behold, the cast in this comes out, and I'm cast as the evil queen, which is pretty dope, especially considering the role with the second most lines in the play. I work hard for about two months practicing and learning my lines and blocking, and even start to stay in character when in a scene with my friends. Hard to do for me. It gets near the performances, and we're having our last few rehearsals before dress rehearsal. There are now some parents of the kids in the play including EP, watching us and helping us set up stuff. While I'm on stage, I hear EP mutter, EP's daughter should have been the evil queen. I don't see why she wasn't. I don't think much of it. EP's kid is cast as one of the dwarfs and she seems happy with her role. So I don't worry that I'm breaking any hearts. The day performances with the classes of the kids go fine, but then comes the night performance. During one of my few moments where I can look out on the crowd, now consisting of families of kids in the play, I see EP is sitting in the right in the front row, staring at me like she was rearing for my eventual death at the end of the play. I get a little spooked, but everything goes fine. The performer goes off without a hitch until the curtain call. I come out for the curtain call and the crowd is applauding, as they have done before. And I hear a few whoops from my excited family in the front row, but my ears determine one other thing, a loud boo coming from the front row on the opposite side of where my family is. I look over and see none other than EP proudly booing me as loud as she possibly can, every once in a while looking behind her as if she's employer, imploring the crowd to join her. It feels like a bad Parks and Rec bit. I'm honestly not sure if anyone else caught it, but I found it entertaining to no end that this woman felt the need to boo a child because of Carson I had no control over. What adult boos a child at a play? <laughs> <laughs> How sad do you have to be? How I met my son. This is a story for my first real grown up job. I just moved to a new city from a little town. I was looking for a new job and this little ran down hotel I was staying at was being sold. The new owner was so delightful and one of those extroverts that could look into your soul and really bring your passions into conversation. We became fast friends and sooner after I became his hotel manager complete with a new apartment on the top floor. This place was a total mess. It had transient and drugs, prostitution and lots of noise. We occasionally got swarmed with bookings because we were so close to a major federal landmark. The story starts on a day like this. I had nearly a line out the door and I'm all alone. A woman dragging a shy kid through our lobby pushed to the front of the line. She had wild eyes and huge track marks down her arm. Her dishevelled appearance made me think of some sort of wild woman. I don't have time to wait. I have a kid. I tried to move the line as quickly as possible. We have a convention in town. You don't understand. I have a kid. I just want to pay for my room and go to bed. These people don't care. I care. Please get back in line so I can get everyone set up in an orderly fashion. 
She argued a little bit more, but I reminded her the more time she wasted, the longer it would be to me to check everyone in. She came back up the line every now and then to whine and act like I personally owed her for having a child. I mostly ignored her and eventually got the idea to send the brunch nook to get some juice for the kid, despite it being closed and well after the times we normally serve people. She finally got a room and it was pretty uneventful that day. The next six months would be insane though. Ravi, my boss, always gave in to her because they found out that he and his wife couldn't have children. It was his weakness. So deflated, he always gave in. I'd have to find some ways to accommodate her and her kid. In one instance, I was eating leftover pizza in my office between rushes. I only had 10 minutes, so I was just standing holding my plate, half pacing trying to think of everything I needed to do. Her kid came in and started whining that he wanted pizza. I told him that I had a stash of cereal and could offer them that instead. He screamed like a banshee and his mother literally walked into my office, grabbed the pizza out of my hand mid-bite. She started braying like a donkey about how I was trying to deprive her child of food. That one actually made me laugh hysterically because it was just so absurd. Since I lived in the building, she once knocked my door at 3am, pushed the little boy into the room and told me she'd be right back. The police came, knocked on her door, kicked out her friend and just left like it was normal. I was in shock. Another time she pushed someone else's child into the pool because he wouldn't give up the book he was reading to her kid. Ravi had finally had enough since she was doing something dangerous to someone else's child. He called CPS. Even though I already called several times, they listened to him. He was a business owner and he sounded more official than some young guy call him. The kid had no other family and Ravi and his beautiful wife loved children. They entered into a foster care situation because Ravi upon finding out his wife couldn't have children decided to move back to India. They had moved to the US to build a family in a safer environment so with that option being taken they wanted to be near their aging parents. After a year the young boy grew into a polite and thoughtful preteen. He was doing really well in school and was returned to his lousy mother. Ravi and his wife returned to India and I stayed on to run the business. Three short months later, she was back in jail. He was 13 and had no one. His social worker talked to me into taking foster parent classes, just until they could sort something out more permanent. I did so. He moved in and a strange twist. His mother just dropped paperwork on him giving up her parental rights. By this time he was 15, I was 27. We had grown very close at this point, so I legally adopted him. He lived with me for the next seven years. He graduated college, got married, and now has a child of his own, a sweet little girl named Gracie, who has big brown eyes and looked like he did the first day I met him all those years ago. And what a fantastic end to that story. <laughs> you know, it, it sounds really bad at one stage because the shit mother who basically didn't look after this poor kid. But yeah, it's good to see that he got married and got his own family and stuff in the end. Fantastic. Fantastic.